Hey there, how's it going? It's Roland. Welcome to another devlog. In this video, I want to talk more about boss fights. It's something I never really see a lot of YouTubers really address or do a deep dive, um, but I'm going to try my best. I mean, why wouldn't you? There's so much to explore. I mean, this is basically the red meat of gaming, so let's get in. Okay, I want to start out this video talking about basic boss designs that I don't really care much for. The first of which are those giant bosses that we've all played. They're like three stories tall and they're essentially just a giant turret. I mean, this was pretty uh, notorious back in the NES days where you had a lot of graphical limitations, but you still kind of see it today, you know, and it's like the most anticlimactic thing ever. The second of which is kiting. It's basically when you have a an enemy or a boss or someone and they just follow you around they have no real sense of agency or ground tactical game the third thing are environmental triggers uh, these are triggers that are mandated for any kind of progression and these are usually done with the best intentions it just i feel that it really robs the player of any sense of accomplishment and it kind of comes off as pre-scripted i mean i think overall just like Interacting with the environment is a good thing and should be encouraged. Just don't make it the centerpiece for your cinematic aspirations. And the fourth thing are spiders. Yeah. That's right, spiders. Nothing against spiders. I think they're just overused. So this is the Collector. He's a recurring boss from the original Daydreamer. He's kind of an early encounter and moderately easy for most players. Uh, many of his tactics from the previous game are carried over in some fashion or another. There are generally three levels of engagement for this guy. So there's uh, there's melee, which is close encounters. Then we have casting, which is about like a mid-range. Yeah. And then we have uh, passive engagement, which is, you know, it's not, he's like aware of your presence, but he's a little bit uh, not, 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 not as aggressive as he would otherwise be. And generally he tries to keep you in the mid-range casting and he has a couple of maneuvers. Uh, for the most part, he throw he hurdles projectiles, and they can come in from different directions. And he also has hook shots, which do come in from two directions at once. And this will usually force the player to move inward, leaving them open for four lunges. So usually the player will have you know one of two strategies moving forward. Uh, generally, they'll try to pan around. Uh, dodge, you know, avoiding projectiles and try to lay in some open shots. Or they'll go all in and aggressive and, you know, just lay in some melee chains and, you know, <laughs> dodge back whenever, you know, whenever they can. He, I mean, he does melee as well. There's also, this is also the, the most risky uh, approach as he does have a berserk mode that does meet a threshold at which can leave the player stunned and, you know, it also does a heavy amount of damage. So to talk about his movement, uh, his movement has some mild kiting. I mean, you know, every enemy has that to some extent. Uh, he'll always try to keep the player uh, in his general direction, pivoting when needed. The player gets two out of his line of sight. He has this like uh, Bowser thwomp he does. And uh, this other attack that I've been working on, uh, it's not really been that developed, but he will expel his stomach uh, from time to time. Uh, the general idea behind this was it'll do some sort of lingering acid damage if the player runs over it. Uh, kind of just shaping <laughs> shaping where the player can go. So that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about. Uh, I am currently working on a couple other bosses, and I'll probably include those into future devlogs. So yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.